20 of the fantasy baseball season. And here's a few hitters I've looked to add this week. The first guy is Jake Myers of the Houston Astros. So Myers, he came up a few weeks ago, already tearing things up here on the season. Three home runs, 11 RBIs, eight runs scored, a stolen base, a 341 average, and a 375 on base in 44 at bats. So right here, he's come out of nowhere pretty much for this Astro team. And they definitely could use the boost with this kid coming up and playing good baseball over there because it's between them pretty much Oakland and Seattle's got a chance as well in that AL West. So the last few games here for Maya is August 16th at Kansas City, 0 for 3 would have run. August 17th at the Royals, 2 for 3 would have run. August 18th at the Royals, 2 for 3. August 19th at the Royals, 1 for 5. August 20th versus Seattle, 1 for 4 with a homer and two RBIs. August 21st versus Seattle, 1 for 3 would have run and three RBIs. August 22nd versus Seattle, three for five with an RBI. So right now he's got a lot of multiple hit games in the last week here is Myers with four. And he's driving in runs, he's showing some power, and he's on a pretty good lineup as well in Houston where not many teams are gonna pitch around this guy. So he's gonna get a lot of fastball counts. And right now he's driving the ball and he's available in 89% of fantasy leagues. And he's definitely worth an ad this week. The next hit is Nicky Lopez of the Kansas City Royals. And Nicky Lopez, he was one of the top prospects in this Royal system over the last few seasons. And now he's getting an opportunity pretty much each and every day. And he's been one of the hottest ads this week in fantasy baseball. On the season, one home run, 32 RBIs, 51 runs scored, 18 stolen bases, a 282 average. And at 353 on base, and over the last couple of weeks here for Lopez, one homer, seven RBIs, nine stolen bases, eight runs scored, a 313 average, and a 365 on base. So, right here, if you need someone at the second base or shortstop position, Lopez is a perfect ad. He's a guy that's going to get a lot of stolen bases, he's going to score some runs, and his batting average has been great over the last few weeks as well. So, the last few games here for Lopez, August 16th. Versus the Astros, one for three with two runs. August 17th versus Houston, one for three. August 18th versus Houston, three for four with a run and two stolen bases. August 19th versus Houston, one for three with a homer, two RBIs. August 20th at the Cubs, 0 for four. August 21st at the Cubs, three for five with an RBI, two stolen bases. And August 22nd at the Cubs, two for three with two runs, an RBI, and a stolen base. So Lopez, he's been added. And 12% of fantasy leagues over the last week here. And he's still available in a great 74% of fantasy leagues. And this is a guy that definitely can make a difference and help your fantasy team this week and possibly the rest of the way. The next hit is Tywin Aikwin of the Cincinnati Reds. And Aikwin, he got off to a roaring start the first month of the season. Then he really slowed down, which, which I figured he would have. But now he's picking things up once again on the season 18 home runs. 66 RBIs, 49 runs scored, 268 average, and a 333 on base. But the last couple weeks here, he's white hot, is Tywin Aikwin. Five home is nine RBIs, 13 runs scored, a 457 average, and a 500 on base. So right there, those are serious numbers in the last couple weeks here. And he's getting on a hot streak once again. And this Cincinnati Red team... They've been on fire as well over the last month of the season. So the last few games here for Naquin, August 16th versus the Cubs, one for three with a run and an RBI. August 17th versus the Cubs, two for four. August 18th versus the Cubs, two for four with a homer and an RBI. August 19th versus the Marlins, one for four. August 20th versus the Marlins, two for four with a homer and RBI and two runs scored. August 21st versus Miami, three for three with three runs. And August 22nd versus Miami, two for four with two homies and two RBI. So I know he's taking advantage of poor pitching teams over the last couple of weeks. But you can't ignore Nate when what he's doing right now. And he's been added in 8% of fantasy leagues in the last couple of days. And he's still available in 52% of fantasy leagues. So if you need some power, some average, he's definitely a guy worth adding. And if he slows down, then you just drop him once again. But right now... He's an ad this week. The next hit is Ahmed Rosario of the Cleveland Indians. So Rosario, it's been a pretty decent season for him on and off. We know he was the piece, one of the pieces in the trade for Francisco Lindor and Carlos Carrasco. And this season, Rosario, he's been more effective 
than Francisco Lindor, believe it or not. Lindor, he was struggling. Then he went on the injured list, and he's been out. He should be coming back soon. But Rosario, as a whole, the numbers aren't that bad. The eight home runs, 43 RBIs, 62 runs scored, 12 stolen bases, 289 average, which is very good for Rosario. And even a 330 on base, so he's showing more patience this season. Even though his batting average to on base still isn't a great ratio, but it's way better than it's been over the last few seasons here when he was with the New York Mets. And the last couple weeks for Rosario, two homers, 11 RBIs, 11 runs scored, a 418 average, and a 439 on base. So another guy who could help you with shortstop. And obviously he plays some outfield as well here for the Indians is Ahmed Rosario. And he's available in 51% of fantasy leagues. So the last few games for him, August 16th in Minnesota, two for five would have run. August 17th in Minnesota, one for four would have run. August 18th in Minnesota, two for six with an RBI. August 20th versus the Angels, two for four, two runs and a rib. August 21st versus the Angels, three for four, homer, RBI, and two runs. And August 22nd versus the Angels, three for four with a homer, two RBIs, and a run. So right now, Rosario, he's heating up. He's finding the power stroke. And he's a guy who's one of the best prospects coming up the last four or five years. But it just hasn't translated really in the major leagues besides that 2019 season. But right here this season, I think it's been a decent year for him with Cleveland. And Cleveland definitely looking a little better in this trade with the Mets considering how it looked early in the season. The next hitter I looked ahead this week's Tyler Stevenson. Another Cincinnati Red on this list. So the Reds here, they're getting hitting from everywhere this season. And this is why they're one of the better teams in the National League. And Stevenson, he's got a lot of value. A guy qualifying a catcher and first base on the season for him. Nine home runs, 40 RBIs, 49 runs scored, a 290 average, and a 375 on base. So right here, very good numbers for Stevenson. In the last couple weeks, he's been smoking hot. Three homers. Six RBIs, five runs scored, a 357 average, and a 419 on base. So right now, it looks like Stevenson, he's been playing more over the last few weeks here. And right now, he's available in 65% of fantasy leagues. So the last few games here for Stevenson, August 17th versus the Cubs, 1 for 3. August 19th versus Miami, 0 for 3 with a run. August 21st versus Miami, 1 for 1 with two RBIs. And August 22nd versus Miami, 1 for 4. So right here, not much in the last couple games, but he's getting an opportunity. He qualifies a catcher in first base and obviously catches one of the weakest positions in all of fantasy baseball. But he's going out there and he's doing his thing, but he's more of a deeper league head right now because he's not consistently playing each and every day or five days a week. But once it gets to that point, he'll be a huge head. But this week, he's definitely worth an head in my opinion. And definitely a player worth getting. The next day, it's Andrew Benintendi of the Kansas City Royals. So Benintendi, he's been pretty decent in his first season here with Kansas City. After getting traded from the Red Sox in the offseason. 12 home runs, 43 RBIs, 52 R runs scored. 8 stolen bases, a 264 average, and a 312 on base. But the last couple weeks here for Benintendi, he's picked it up. 1 home run, 5 RBIs, 11 runs scored, a 320 average. And a 352 on base. So right here, the only down thing for him, the on base to average ratio in the time. But he's a street kid of Ben and Teddy. He pretty much has been throughout his career. And right now, he's heating up and playing good baseball. And he's definitely worth an ad the last few games for him. August 16th versus Houston, 1 for 4 with a run. August 17th versus Houston, 2 for 4 with two runs. August 18th versus Houston, 1 for 3 with a run. August 19th versus Houston, 1 for 4. August 20th at the Cubs, 2 for 4 with a homer and RBI and a run. August 21st at the Cubs, 2 for 4 with a run. And August 22nd at the Cubs, 3 for 4 with two runs and three RBIs. So right here, good numbers for Ben and Tenney. He's driving runs in. He's getting RBIs. And he's a guy I definitely would add this week. And he's available in 53% of the league. The next hitter I look to add is Jazz Chislam Jr., of the Miami Marlins, so another guy who qualifies at second and short, and this is what you need this late in the season. Guys at tough positions to emerge, and that you can pick up and help you on your fantasy team. So Chislam Jr., he got traded a few seasons ago for Zach Gowan, and that's a pretty even trade in my opinion, the way it's looked so far. 
throughout their career. So on the season here for Chisholm, 14 homers, 43 RBIs, 49 runs scored, 13 stolen bases, a 255 average, and a 316 on base. So right here, pretty good numbers this season for his first year as Chisholm. He shows speed. He's showing some surprising pop as well. And over the last couple of weeks, he's playing well as well. Three homers, seven RBIs, two stolen bases, eight runs scored, a 286 average, and a 355 on base. So obviously this Miami Marlins team, they're not going anywhere this season. Their last place in the National League. So guys like Chisholm and other young players, they're going to get an opportunity each and every day to play. And he's been playing pretty good the last few games. August 16th versus Atlanta, one for four with a homer and an RBI. August 18th versus Atlanta, two for five a run and a rib. August 20th at Cincinnati, two for four a homer, three RBIs. A stolen base and a run. August 21st at Cincinnati. 0 for 2 with a run and an RBI. And August 22nd in Cincinnati. 0 for 4 with a run and a stolen base. So right here, pretty solid numbers over the last couple of weeks for Chisholm. And he's a guy not widely available in leagues. Only available in 45% of fantasy leagues. But hey, if you need second base or shortstop help. And a guy will get you a few steals. Get a couple homers occasionally here and there. And score runs, I think he's a good hit this week. The next hit is Frank Schwindel of the Chicago Cubs. So Schwindel, he was on the hit list last week. And once again, he's on it this week. He's been a surprising player here for the Cubs since they traded pretty much their whole team at the deadline. With Rizzo going, Chris Bryant, Javier Baez going, Jock Peterson. So now Schwindel on the season in 89 at-bats. Five homies, 18 RBIs, 11 runs scored, a 315 average. And at 358 on base, a solid numbers for a small sample size, which I know. But the last couple weeks, he had three homers, 10 RBIs, seven runs scored, a 362 average, and a 423 on base. A Schwindel in the last week, his ownage has gone up 31%, which is a huge number here. So owners, they're paying attention to what he's doing. And right now, though, he's still available in 59% of fantasy leagues, you swindle. But if he keeps this up, he's going to be off the waiver wire and the free agency list quickly. The last few games for him, August 16th at Cincy, 2 for 5 with a run. August 17th at the Reds, 2 for 4 with a rib. August 18th at the Reds, 2 for 4 with an RBI. August 20th versus the Royals, 0 for 4. August 21st versus the Royals, 0 for 2 with a run. And August 22nd versus the Royals, 2 for 4. So right here... In the last week, he's got four multiple hit games as Schwindel. He's finding the holes. He's getting hits. He's not driving in that many runs. But, hey, if you need some batting average and a guy who's going to get on base and not strike out a lot, I think Schwindel's a good hit. And he's got some versatility, qualifying at first and outfield. And the next hitter I'd look to edge, Travis Darno of the Atlanta Braves. At Darno, he came off the injury list after he missed about three months with the injury here and that's been the downfall for Darno throughout his career a lot of injuries but now he's back even though he went on the paternity list but he should be back any day now here's Darno so in a small sample size this season four home runs 17 RBIs 236 average 93 on base in only 106 at bats but since he returned in the last few weeks here Darno two homies six RBIs four runs scored a 292 average and a 414 on base, a pretty solid numbers here. We know Darno, he's got capability of hitting 20 home runs. And this season, it's been pretty much a lost year with only 100 plus at bats for Darno here. But right now, in the stretch run, the Braves are obviously going to use him. And he's going to be a player that can help fantasy teams. And obviously, the Braves, in my opinion, he's available in 53% of fantasy weeks. So the last few games before he went on the paternity list. August 13th at the Nationals, 2 for 4 with a homer and an RBI. August 14th at Washington, 0 for 5. August 16th at Miami, 2 for 5 with a run and two RBIs. August 18th at Miami, 0 for 3 with a run and a rib. August 20th at Baltimore, 2 for 3 with a homer and two RBIs. And we haven't seen him since, but I think he'll return in the next couple days here is Travis Darnall. And he's a guy that definitely could contribute and help you at a weak catches position this season and the final hitter I'd look to add this week Stolten Varsho of the Arizona Diamondbacks of so Varsho he's another guy who qualifies a catcher and outfield and he's pretty much getting an everyday opportunity now with this Diamondback team 
on the season, eight home runs, 24 RBIs, 26 runs scored, four stolen bases, 238 average, and a 344 on base for the last couple weeks here. He's one of the hottest hitters in all of baseball. Three homers, eight RBIs, six runs scored, stolen base, 478 average, and a 571 on base. So right here, he's putting up big numbers. He's showing power as bar show. But the only damn thing with him, he's not an everyday player. He's only going to give you four or five days a week starting. But with these big numbers, they should go out there and pretty much play him every day is Arizona. And he's available in 72% of fantasy weeks. So the last few games for him, August 14th versus San Diego, 2 for 3. August 15th versus San Diego, 0 for 1. August 17th versus Philly, 1 for 2 with a run. August 19th versus Philly, 0 for 3. August 21st at the Rockies, 2 for 4 with a homer and an RBI. And August 22nd at the Rockies, 3 for 4, a homer, 4 RBIs, and 2 runs scored. So right here, pretty solid numbers for Varsho over the last few weeks, like I mentioned. And if you need some catcher or outfield help, he's definitely worth an ad, in my opinion. And he's available in 72% of fantasy weeks. So that's a few hitters I look to add here on week 20 of a fantasy baseball season.